Hey, uh, this is a lot more difficult than you think. I have been trying so many times, putting the phone vertical, putting the phone sideways, uh, where do I have to look? Do I have to look up? Do I have to look at the camera over there? It's, you cannot imagine. Right now, my telephone is on my computer on top of four fat books. So it's this level, but at least my eyes are like this, okay? Um, let's get started, okay? My name is Sophia Zajac. I represent the Abaco Club. And I've been the person, the person who accompanies the clients, who organizes the, the trips. And um, I'm, yeah, I've just thought that this is a way to keep the club going, okay? Um, we're all stuck at home and we're bored out of our minds. So let's, let's make it happen, okay? Um, the first thing we're gonna do today is our Spanish class, okay? And uh, next week we'll be doing a little bit of exercise, stretching and mobility. And then the following week, um, I'll be teaching you to cook, okay? And um, let's see, I want to welcome you to my home, okay? Obviously, this is not Lolita's or Mackey Cafe, which we usually go to. Uh, but let's make the most of the situation. Uh, while it lasts and we're secluded at home. So let's begin, okay? I suggest you find a nice place in your home and grab a coffee or maybe a glass of wine. I have mine. <laughs> okay, uh, today we will have a Spanish conversation workshop, okay? In this case, it's not gonna be as usual because we won't be able to speak with each other like we usually do. Um, it is very important to say that these workshops are not grammar classes. Also, that the phrases are not literally translated, okay? And uh, I have to insist on this because uh, we're not gonna break down the sentences and analyze them and all of this, okay? We're not going to be going into the verbs and the tenses and all that. These are just uh, fun classes where we, where I think up different situations in life, okay? And maybe going to the supermarket, which is what we're going to be doing today. And um, I don't know, last week we did, no, not last week, the week before last, uh, we did uh, going to a restaurant where we ordered our food. Uh, we did a little bit of role playing. One of us was the client, the other person was the waiter, and then we switched, okay? So we all had a chance to do both ways because it's important to speak and to listen, okay? So that's what it's all about, pronouncing and also listening, okay? Um, like I said, I think this is a funner way of learning Spanish. Uh, it doesn't really matter if, if you do the verbs better or worse, okay? The idea is to make yourself understood, okay? Um, let's see, both workshops were fun and everybody took a lot of interest and participated. And the most important thing I always say, put your shyness aside, okay? And what you have to do is make yourself be understood. So let's try and do the best we can. And I don't know if you wanna follow along when I say things, or I don't know, feel free to ask questions, okay? Because what I'm doing is at the same time as I'm speaking to you, I'm also reading, okay, the comments that you write, any questions that you might have, okay? We can put that together, okay? So, this time we're gonna be going to a food market. Let's begin, okay. Um, as you saw on the Abaco newsletter and on the web, okay, uh, you can download your cheat sheet, which I hope you've done, and I'm just, I have it on my computer. So if you see that I'm looking at something, <coughs> it's not, um, it's my cheat sheet 
I have one just like you, okay? So let's begin by, let's say we get to the, to the supermarket or to the food market, okay? And of course, we're gonna say, buenos dias, good morning. Buenas tardes is good afternoon or good evening, okay? Because when you say buenas noches, that means it's good night. It's actually nighttime, okay? It's not a question of whether it's dark or it's not dark, okay? So let's, let's repeat that. Buenos dias. Buenas noches. Oops, I made a mistake. Buenas tardes. Buenas noches. Okay, when we are in front of that person who's going to help us, okay, uh, he is probably, or she, they're probably going to talk to you in the usted form, okay, and they will say, le puedo ayudar, can I help you? You would answer something like, me pones 100 gramos de jamón york, por favor? This would be, can you give me 100 grams of boiled ham? But of course, this is just an example, okay? Let's repeat that. Me pones 100 gramos de jamón york, por favor? Uh, think that you can say, me pones 100 gramos de queso, por favor? Or you can say a million things, you know, th these are just examples. We're not gonna make the list this long. I am gonna include a list of fish and a list of meat cuts, okay? Because everybody was asking me at the last class, you know, if we could differentiate that, okay? Because it's, it seems like it's, it's not that clear, okay? If you would like half a kilo of something, you would say, me pones medio kilo de tomates, por favor? Can you please give me one kilo of tomatoes, please? Um, me pones medio kilo de tomates, por favor? Like Luis always says, Luis is the guy that I work with, <laughs> okay? He, he's my um, companion who always comes with me on the Spanish classes. He always says, when you say por favor, it's like a magic word, okay? It's what draws people's attention and it makes them listen, okay? Let's continue. Um, some of you have asked, ¿Tienes pollo campero? Do you have free range chicken? Um, when we're all worried about what we're eating, we wanna eat fresh produce, okay? We also, some of us wanna eat ecological food as well, okay? So that's why I'm asking, ¿Tiene pollo campero? In this case, if you would order a whole chicken, the, uh, the butcher would say to you, Se lo preparo para asar. Se lo preparo para asar. This means, would you like it for baking? Okay. Um, you know that in this sense, they would clean out everything, but they, they would leave your chicken whole, okay? Which is maybe for baking, that would be the best. But in the case that you would like fillets, you would say, me pone medi un kilo de filetes de pechuga de pollo. Can you give me one kilo of chicken fillets? And then, even though it's not in blue, because I forgot to do that, eh, los quiere finos? Would you like them sliced thin? Los quiere finos? Finos is thin, okay? And maybe you would say, no, normal. No, no, normal. Okay, let's continue. Eh, ¿Tienen solomillo? Do you have sor sirloin? Okay. Eh, in the case 
that they would ask you how much would you like because sometimes you're specifying how much you want and other times you're just asking if they have that product or not okay in this case si sí. cuánto quiere the butcher would say yes like yes i have it um how much would you like si sí. cuánto quiere In Spain, um, the meat cuts, okay, the beef cuts are cut differently. Well, in Spain, in the United States, in, um, in the UK, uh, but we always have this big question, the Americans at least, uh, what do you recommend for making a roast beef? In Spanish, you would say, ¿Qué me recomienda? Para un roast beef. What do you recommend for roast beef? And he would tell you, because I've learned over the years, I've been in Spain for 41 years now. So he would say to you, Te aconsejo rabillo de cadera. I recommend rump, okay? Uh, let's go over these before we start with the fish, okay? Start at the beginning and let's say, Buenos días. Buenas tardes. Buenas noches. ¿Le puedo ayudar? ¿Me pones 100 gramos de jamón york, por favor? ¿Me pones medio kilo de tomates? Por favor. ¿Tiene pollo campero? ¿Se lo preparo para asar? ¿Me pones un kilo de filetes de pechuga de pollo? ¿Los quiere finos? No, normal. ¿Tiene solomillo? Sí. ¿Cuánto quiere? ¿Qué me recomienda para un roast beef? Te aconsejo rabillo de ternera. ¿El pescado es de piscifactoría o salvaje? ¿Is the fish wild or farm grown? Ok, that was a big change I just made. We're into fish now. And you need to know that if you are buying at the fish market, there's two types of fish, okay? You can get uh, wild fish or you can get farm-grown fish, okay? The price is gonna be completely different. Uh, they're gonna let you know what it is. I mean, uh, when you order lubina, for example, if it costs six euros, then you know it's farm-grown. If it costs 36 euros a kilo, then you know it's wild, okay? And plus they're a little bit bigger. But like I said, eh, el pescado es de piscifactoría o salvaje. And they would ask you, ¿se lo limpio? Would you like for me to clean it? Changing subjects again. ¿Dónde están los productos bio? Where are the bio products, please? Okay. Mm, you know that, that in every supermarket, there's different sections. Maybe this is interesting for you. Okay. That's where you would find um, the eggs, the milk, the um, leche de avena, the soya milk. Okay. Uh, just think of any products that you might find in that section. And usually, okay, avena, for example, means oatmeal. Soya means soja in Spanish, okay? But in that section is where you can find non-gluten, um, any kind of products that would be biological, okay? And... Um, ¿Me puede decir dónde están los cereales? Can you tell me where the cereal is, please? Okay, the reason that I'm um, 
that I put this example is just so that you can use it with everything else. Maybe you just wanna say, um, where's the dishwashing liquid, okay? But me puede decir dónde están los cereales? Me puede decir dónde están los detergentes, the detergents, for example, or las galletas, the cookies, okay? Just that's the way that you would, you would say it. Um, changing the subject, okay? Uh, I made a list of fish for you, okay? Uh, caballa is mackerel. Lenguado is sole. Dorada is bream. Salmon is salmon, of course. Merluza is hake. Bacalao is cod. Rape is monkfish. Lubina is sea bass. Besugo is sea bream. Mero is grouper. Abadejo is haddock. And boquerones are fresh anchovies. Okay. In all of these cases with the fish, they would, of course, uh, take their tripe out and uh, their fins and everything. When they ask you, se lo limpio, that's what they mean. If you don't want it uh, clean, just say no, okay? Because maybe you want to put it in the oven, you know, instead of having it done. You can also ask for fillets, which you would go to the section where we were talking about the, um, uh, the chicken, and you could say, me los haces filetes, por favor. Imagine that you buy a um, merluza, okay? Merluza, since it's pretty big, then you can get um, like round pieces, okay? Which are rodajas, okay? They're, they're like slices, okay? Or maybe you want filetes and they, you know, they take out the spine and then they would do the fillets, okay? So you would either say, me lo limpia, por favor, y me hace filetes, or you would say, me lo limpia y me hacen rodajas, rodajas, which are slices, okay? You would tell them how thick you want the slices as well, okay? Um, sometimes they're gonna ask you if you want the head, Okay, because maybe you want to make a soup with it. Okay, and then they would say, ¿Quiere la cabeza? And you would either say, no, <laughs> because it grosses you out. Or maybe you would say, sí, quiero la cabeza. Okay. Uh, going on to beef cuts. Okay. Carrillada is this. Okay. Ox cheek. Carrillada. Remember, the two R's and the two L's. Pescuezo. Cuello. We're talking about the neck. Sticking. Aguja. That's chuck. Pecho. Clod. Brazuelo. Jarrete delantero. Or morcillo anterior. This is the shin or the shank. Okay, lomo alto, fore rib, costillar, top rib, leta, brisket, lomo bajo, y solomillo, sirloin, falda, flank, cadera, rump, cadera y tapa, silver side. Tapilla y redondo, top side. Contra y culata de contra, top rump. Morcillo posterior, leg. Rabo, oxtail. Um, at the end of this video, we can, you can ask me questions okay, about anything that we've seen, okay? And um, I hope 
that you enjoyed this. For me, it was kind of lonely. <laughs> the truth is, I would rather be in class with you. And uh, I like I like the way we role play and we laugh because we always end up laughing, okay? We always end up uh, with different examples and one thing just leads to another, okay? And um, maybe next time we do this, maybe instead of doing this type of video, maybe we can do more of a, of a conversation, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. We'll see how we can do that. For now, um, I hope you enjoyed and keep the questions coming, okay? Un beso. Bye-bye. See you.